Hi guys, it's me, it's Lemmy and Finistro, and of course today is uh, the 27th, it is indeed is Sunday, and um, coming up tonight of course will be Cutthroat Kitchen, and uh, a few other shows, Michelle watches, we've been having some slight issues with the DVR lately, um, so we're going to try to keep on top of the different programs um, that we want to watch, including of course coming up on August 5th. I'll be the new season of Hollywood Hillbillies. And on September 28th on ABC Networks around uh, 8 p.m. will be Once Upon a Time, season four, um, starring Anna and Elsa. Um, and Elsa will be played by Georgina Haig, and Anna will be played by Elizabeth Lull. And um, so it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Today we decided to see on um, this video if the automatic exposure may be a better choice for the fact that the sun keeps going in and out and behind the clouds and keep changing our exposure levels. Um, right now looking at the camera it looks like it's okay. Um, this is very hot. I Michelle made this coffee earlier and it is very, 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 very hot. Um, Of course, by the time I got to it, it's a little cooler, but not by much. Um, I look, a couple episodes ago, I, I talked about how we pull up um, ideas for videos. And I mentioned like that we don't always necessarily have an idea of what to talk about um, ahead of time. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. And so today, we're going to talk about death um, and uh, near-death experiences because, well, I don't think it's a topic I really talked much about uh, recently. Death is not an end, in a sense. It's like... A be it is an end, but it's also a beginning. We see, for example, when we die, our, and we, our physical body's time on Earth ends, but our spiritual life continues, and we continue to grow in spiritual form. Um, what little knowledge we know on this Earth um, is only a small subset of our actual body's abilities, okay? Now, um, people, for example, have always asked, at least since Homo habilis, and maybe even further back than that, of what happens after we die. Well, uh, depending on which faith system you believe in, you either Nothing. It's just a cold, stark darkness. It has nothing to it. Or it is more universally be universally believed that death is also when we um, reach another level of existence on the spiritual level, and we get farther ahead. Unfortunately, those who have totally died and come back from the dead is far and few in between. However, we have had reports from near-death experiences that seems to be fairly universal as of what happens to a person, heaven or hell. Um, yes, unfortunately, some people, when they have near-death experience, see hell and others don't see hell. Um, majority of the people don't see hell. They see heaven. But there are a few that have reported seeing hell. And they are the ones who terrified to death because they knew that they were not going to be going to heaven. The sad truth is, is let's be honest here. Mother Asna loves you. Father Yahweh loves you. And they don't want to see you suffer 
internally in the lake of fire. That's not even really what hell is. But hell is certainly not pleasant. It's not run by Yahweh. It's not run by Mother Asna. It's run by another group. We hear about them in the fall of the demons being cast out along with a third of the heavenly host uh, Lucifer and his demonic group. Now, many pagan groups do not necessarily believe in the devil as the Christian paradigm does. But I think that there is some truth to it. The devil is real. Um, he really does want uh, just to know that he is to destroy your souls. And that is indeed what makes it hard. Mother Asna and Father Yahweh do not want people to end up in hell. Or go through the left door. But rather they want us to be reunited with our friends and family on the other side. But sometimes because of actions that we have done. We do not feel that we're worthy to return to the other side. But we don't want to go through the left door, and that's the only open, uh, open option for us. So we choose to stick around as a ghost. Because we don't think we're eligible for, for going to the other side, and we don't want to go to hell. So it's a really sad thing when that happens. It's different if you choose to stick around because you feel is your necessity to protect someone that's different. It's not where you actually want afraid of going to hell or heaven or whatever. You just chose to stay behind to protect someone or something as best you can as a spirit. Well, obviously, um, Michelle has explained what purgatory was to me. And in her own way, she said to me, I see purgatory like a big train station. I come in to the train station. I'm waiting for the train to either heaven or hell. I don't know which one I'm going to get on. I know that in, in purgatory, I have to wait here an indefinite amount of time because my train has been delayed. I believe I'm supposed to go onto the platform for the gate to go to the, to the other side, the positive side of heaven. But unfortunately, I had to sit there and wait for the train. And I don't know how long it's going to be before it arrives. And then, after an indeterminate period of time, a porter comes to me and says, Mr. Lenny, it's time. Uh, your train just pulled into the gate. It's on track two. Realizing I ain't got no choice where I'm going to go, I already know from the way he's smiling that I was already guaranteed that I was going to go to the other side. And I'm happy to see that. But I could see that other people sit there, gnash fear, afraid, afraid to realize that they may not be given the option of going to the other side, and rather either A, have to stay there in purgatory even longer, or find themselves having to take the train to hell. No matter what they did, they just can't come clean enough to receive the ticket to go into the train to the other side or heaven. Now, that's a pretty deep thought. I mean, think about this. There's so many people in this world right now who are doing things to each other, which clearly is not at all a comforting thought for anyone. I don't have to go into all the details. Michelle has covered that in a lot of her videos, and I'm not going to repeat the video topics. Clearly, I wonder if some of those people really think about what is going to happen to them 
when their time comes, are they ready? Or do they really have a consideration? Do they care? Well, if you don't care, I guess it doesn't matter, right? You basically say, I'm just dead meat anyway, so what the heck does it matter? Let's put it this way. Michelle said the little dark time, tea time of the soul or winterland. If you really want to live in that kind of stark, austere, inhospitable environment where nobody even wants to know your name, that's fine. But a good portion of America would rather be in a place where everybody's happy and that there's true, genuine love for all well-being, all mankind. But it's your choice. You can choose whichever one you want to be. Just like uh, Dr. Boyce said on uh, the Mandre, as a doctor, I've seen both kinds, the living and the dying. The truth is, is that there are people in this world who, because of lack of faith, have stopped living and stopped loving. And those are the ones who don't care one way or another because they think they're not, or that they're not worthy to enter the kingdom of heaven. Let me assure you that every single person in this world is eligible to enter the kingdom of heaven. Every single one of you. Now, you could be calling it all kinds of names. You could be called the Aleutian Fields. You can call it Summerland. You can call it Nirvana. You can call it, you know, the other side is a common term we use. Cause it's really more alchemical than using any particular term like heaven. But the point is, is that you can choose which one you rather be. Do you want to be happy? Do you want to have, do you want to be content? Of course you do. But why do people feel like that they can't have anything? Because part of the problem is, is our society has told their children and told ourselves that you're not good enough. That's sad. That really is sad. Now, People ask me also is will our loved when we say our loved ones, who are they? Is it just people? No. It's not just people. It's our pets. Whatever they may be. Horse, dog, cat, rhinoceros, hippopotamus, whatever it may be. It's our pets too. So they'll be waiting for us. And they will greet us when we come there. So no matter what happens, if you think about how much you miss your old cat or your, your pet snake or whatever, be assured they will be there for you when you go home. And you will also, of course, have your mind open, unlocked, so you can see all about the other lifetimes you've had. So not only are you going to have the pets from this lifetime meeting you, you're going to have the pets from prior lives coming into your life to greet you. It's going to be joyful. It's going to be a wonderful time. It's going to be a great time for everybody. And then, of course, our loved ones are going to meet us, too. All of our loved ones. Again, all of our lives. It's going to be a great homecoming. Isn't that cool? Everybody kind of knows your name. Everybody knows your name. They know your real name from the other side. And they know who you really are. They know what you really look like. They're going to be there for you. It's ironic. Michelle, her hair on the other side is white. My hair on the other side is dark brown. And yet, she wanted to have her some of her natural hair on the other side show up in this life. On this, on this body. That took a lot of work to do that. But she tried. She did it. 
So anyway, the point I'm trying to say is, is that every single person we ever knew will be there. What about the bad ones? The dark souls, they're allowed to be interact with us. Well, they're not going to be there. It's not funny. The dark souls, we know who they are. We recruited the dark souls, in a sense, to be part of our lives, too, in our life charts and the Akasha records. Do you know what Deja Vu is? Deja Vu is when you realize you recognize somebody from your past and say, Oh, I remember you, gee. But where the fuck do I remember you from? And then we find out when we get home to the other side, they had been with us in the prior lives and they chose to be part of our lives again this time. Something to think about. By the way, don't forget that I still need one more subscriber for number 10. Please. I really like 10 as number. It's a nice number. It is not a prime number. It is got several factors, which makes me feel very comfortable. It's got 1, 10, 2, 5, um... Unlike Michelle's number, she wants to get a 60. It's, this has got several factors. Uh, nine has got only one, three, nine. Okay. So, let's think about for now. So, anyway, don't forget to like or dislike. Like Michelle says, share with your friends and enemies always and comment in the comment section below we'll read them doesn't mean we'll always reply to them but we'll try and if you're not a subscriber just subscribe it's easy and then we'll always be kept abreast of any new video topics or things like that okay bye bye everybody